and the speed of light. Now, according to theoretical physics, if it, were, if, it were, if it were possible for atoms to move at the speed of light, the atoms would enter a dimension outside time and space, which the Bible describes as eternity, where God lives. Now, when at the Transfiguration, there was Moses and Elijah present. So we can assume that actually Jesus was then at the Transfiguration in eternity. Since Jesus was in eternity, the atoms of his body were moving at or beyond the speed of light, according to theoretical physics. So according to theoretical physics, as the atoms of Jesus' body accelerated the speed of light, Jesus actually entered eternity. Since Moses and Elijah were present, we can assume that Jesus Christ was really in eternity. Now, we don't know exactly what happened at the Transfiguration, but we do know that Jesus' body gave off intense light. So it's reasonable to assume that, the change occur that some change occurred in the atoms of Jesus' body. The speed of the atoms of Jesus' body greatly accelerated, giving off intense light and almost certainly radiation as well. Now, when Moses went up the mountain to see God, we're told that by, in the Bible that uh, Moses went up Mount Sinai to, to receive the Ten Commandments. But when he came down, we're told in Exodus 34, Moses didn't realize as he came back down the mountain with the tablets that his face glowed from being in the presence of God. Well, this was almost certainly a radiation phenomenon. So when Jesus was resurrected, the shroud was in intimate contact with the glorified body of Jesus Christ. And it probably shone with light and radiation in the same way as Moses' face. Now we know that the resurrection was a, a radioactive process because that's what Dr. S. Asseta discovered. The burst of radiation at the resurrection caused more radioactive C14 to be formed on the actual material of the shroud. And the additional radioactive C14 on the shroud has been proved by the carbon dating machines. The actual, um, the people who did the carbon dating of the shroud have done us a great favor because they've actually shown that there's the additional radioactive C14 on the on a shroud, uh, which is unexpected. Um, it, as I told you before, there was a lot of C14 on the shroud. It's a radioactive shroud. Now, Remember that Mechthild Fleury Lemberg specifically discounts the invisible mending theory. She says that in her professional opinion, no additional cloth has been added to the authentic first century shroud. So after three days and three nights, Jesus' uncorrupted body was raised from the dead, leaving an image on the shroud of Turin. The resurrection added additional C14 to this first century shroud. Nobody was present, and we don't know exactly how the resurrection took place. But we do have a number of pointers from the Bible and also from nuclear physics. The Holy Spirit re-entered the dead body of Jesus with a tremendous burst of light and energy similar to the transfiguration. The radiation was sufficient to raise the dead body of Jesus back to life and also to clothe his body with light and to resurrect his dead but uncorrupted body. Remember, Jesus is God and is clothed, by, and is clothed in light. In Psalm 104, it says that God covers himself with light as with a garment. So Jesus' body was now raised to his glorified body. And remember at the transfiguration, Jesus' face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. So probably the shroud became as white as the light when Jesus was raised to his glorified body. In heaven, his face shone like the power of the sun in unclouded brilliance. Now, the shroud was in direct contact with the body of Jesus Christ. And the atoms of Jesus' body were now traveling at the speed of light because Jesus Christ was now in eternity. And at the resurrection, the linen of the shroud was subjected to a huge burst of light and radiation, which included visible light, ultraviolet light, infrared light, gamma rays, and X-rays. And the burst of light and radiation caused more radioactive C14, C14 to be formed. It may have been from nitrogen in the air or from the carbon in the chlorophyll of the, of the flax. The first century shroud now contained much more radioactive C14. The light, including X-rays, gamma rays, ultraviolet rays, as well as, a, as radiation of subatomic particles, in some way left a perfect imprint of Jesus' crucified body on the shroud. The image was in photo negative except for the blood which was in photo positive. The blood had already been there for three days and was in normal photo positive. The photo negative image was caused at the resurrection. The image on the shroud caused by the radiation 
has th unique three-dimensional properties which were only discovered in 1976 using the VP8 image analyzing NASA computer. The images of the coins over the eyes minted by Pontius Pilate dated the shroud to the years immediately after 29 AD. The x-rays released at the resurrection even left behind x-ray features on the shroud. The extra, the extra C14 proves that additional radiation was added to the original shroud dated 33 AD, which proves the resurrection. The excess C14 in the linen of the shroud was caused by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Shroud of Turin is actually a parable. It's a modern 21st century parable. You see, Jesus said to his disciples, he said the knowledge, this is in Luke chapter 8, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you. The Shroud of Turin is a secret. And it says the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, the believers. However, Jesus said this, but to others I speak in parables, so, so that those seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. I think it's true of the shroud that people, they look at it and they don't see it, they hear about it and they don't understand it. Peter, it says in 2 Peter 3, in the last days scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. Most people scoff at the Shroud of Turin. You know, I speak about the Shroud of Turin a lot. And, you know, people scoff at the Shroud. They think it's a fraud. It's not a fraud. It's a modern scientific miracle. The Shroud of Turin is a modern scientific miracle. To Christians who understand the resurrection, the fact that the Shroud has lots of radioactive C14 in it is fantastic, wonderful news because Jesus Christ left behind him undeniable scientific evidence of his resurrection. The Shroud of Turin proves the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's the garden tomb. It's empty. There's nobody there. There's the door. He's not here because he's risen. Jesus has risen from the dead. Jesus Christ created the whole universe. Only God can do that. God the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead, creating the Shroud of Turin in the process. Only God can raise the dead. Only God can create the Shroud of Turin. The Shroud of Turin pro provides absolute scientific evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Here I presented to you absolute undeniable scientific evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is alive. Now, all information and images are intended to be used under the fair use clause of the copyright law. Um, very, very grateful indeed to Howard and Leslie Condor of Genesis and Revelation TV for very kindly helping in the production of this. This is a free DVD and may be freely downloaded. Um, further information on the crucifixion and the resurrection on our charity websites, finalfrontier.org.uk, freechristianteaching.org. This DVD can be freely downloaded, copied and distributed. Please do so. There's no charge at all from finalfrontier.org.uk. UK, freechristianteaching.org, and video.google.com. Thank you for looking at this. I hope you found this interesting. God bless you for watching this. I hope this has helped you. Please, please study this and distribute it. Please use this information and let your friends know all about this important information. The Shroud of Turin is authentic and scientifically, scientifically proves the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you. A new beginning. And right across Europe, right across Germany, right across Russia, I prophesied that Europe shall have the message of God. Oh, she is a